Hi guys, welcome to Harbor Kids, Virtual Kids Church. So glad you could join us today. I'm really excited that we get to meet like this and that we can still connect through the camera and through the video. It's awesome to just know that you're out there listening and watching and hearing from the Word of God. Okay, hey, I've got some exciting news. It's called Kids Summer Road Trip. It's going to be a three-day kids day camp, okay? And it's gonna be August 13th, 14th, and 15th from 10 to five. It's about $20 per kid, and we're gonna have activities and worship and lessons, all the fun elements that you have at kids camp for the week, we're gonna do in three days. So don't miss it, right? We're gonna have fun games and all that fun stuff, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss out, all right? So make sure that you have a parent get a hold of me and call me here at the church, or you can personal message me through Facebook. That would be great. Let me know you're attending because we have to have a yes, I am attending, okay? So that we know how many uh, helpers to get us, okay? All right, let's pray and we're gonna get started with our day. Lord, we are so excited to just be in Kids Church today, Father. I pray today, Lord, that you would just have your way in our hearts, Jesus. Holy Spirit, that you would just touch us where we're at, Lord. Sometimes things are a little bit crazy around us, God, and I just pray for peace right now where we sit, Lord. And I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, ready to have some fun? Let's go.
Hi, Detective Dan here. Your mission in this game, should you choose to accept it, is to memorize the pictures we show you. Then, I will take one away. Your job is to tell me which picture is missing. Let's get started. Look at these cabinets with locks. Which door is missing a lock? The green one. Great job! Memorize these animal footprints. Now, which one is missing? That's right! The bird! Great job! Look at the shapes on this wall. Which shape is missing? Yes! It's the heart! You're doing great! Memorize these pictures. Which picture is missing? That's correct! It's the dog! Look at these keys. Which key is missing? The red one. Nice job. Take a look at this. Which item is missing? The hamburger. Great job. You fulfilled your mission. Hi guys, ready to do our memory verse today? Awesome, let's do this. Today's memory verse is, let's not become weary in doing good. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. All right, you guys, let's say it one more time. Ready? Let us not become weary in doing good. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. Okay, now I'm going to remove some words. All right, and I want you guys to see if you can figure it out even though it's gone okay here we go let us not become weary in doing good we will reap a harvest if we do not give up galatians 6 9. you guys that was really good i know some of you missed it but some of you got it and that's awesome so let's try again okay see if you can figure out which word is missing let us not become weary in doing good we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. Oh, guys, that was so much better. Okay, here we go. Ready? Let's do it again. Let us not become weary in doing good. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. Oh, you guys, man, you've got this down. Okay, one more time. Let's see if you can figure out what part is missing this time. I know I'm trying to trick you, but you're not, you're not letting me. You're figuring it out. Okay, here we go. Let us not become weary in doing good. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. Wow, you guys. I know you figured it out that time. That was awesome. Way to go. Okay, let's all say it together loud as we can. Okay, here we go. Let us not become weary in doing good. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9. Awesome job today, guys. Remember to hide God's word in your heart, okay? Hi, guys. We're just going to get in that place where we can worship with the Lord today. So just want you to close your eyes and focus on Jesus and his amazing goodness to us. 
and let's just worship Jesus together. Here we go. lesson today? I've got another parable from Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, I'm so excited to be in Kids Church today, Lord. Father, I pray today that these words would sit in our hearts, God. Father, that, that your Holy Spirit would whisper sweet things in our ear, Lord, as we hear from you today, God. And Jesus, that we would recognize and know that you are our Savior, Lord, and that you have good for us. Good for us. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you do. We love you, Lord. Amen. All right, you guys. Today, I am going to be reading from Mark 13, 32 through 37, and Luke 12, 35 and 48. And I'm actually going to read the verses to you today, okay? So it says, and starts in Mark 13, verse 32. So if you want to get your Bibles, you can do that. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, be on guard. Be alert. You don't know what time will, when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Okay, so Jesus told this parable about a man who went on a long trip and he gave each of his servants a job to do. And he put them in charge of his entire house. He didn't tell the servants when he would return. They had to keep busy taking care of everything and be watching for the master's return. The master didn't want to find them sleeping on the job, right? Nobody wants to see that. 
That means he would have wanted them to be faithful and to keep doing their jobs, whether he was there or not, and to not be goofing off. Okay? All right, so that's Mark 13, 32. And now we're going to do Luke 35 through 48. They sound similar. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and he knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It'll be good for those servants whose master finds them watching. When he comes, truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It'll be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Then it says, Peter asked the Lord, are you telling this parable to us? or to everyone. And the Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the man, who the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of the servant will come one day, and when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. In this second parable, Jesus is talking about a man who left his servants in charge while he went to a wedding. Those servants were to watch and wait for the master's return and they were to take care of things while he was away and if they slept on the job, the master might return suddenly. And when they did not expect it, he wouldn't find them not working. Jesus did a lot of his teaching through parables. Do you remember what a parable is? We talked about this about the very beginning of our lessons in the parables. Remember, it's a short, short, short story designed to illustrate or teach a truth, a religious principle, or a moral lesson. When Peter asked Jesus who the parable was for, Jesus told him it was for all of his followers. Anyone who is faithful to do good while he waits. For Jesus to return is like a wise servant who is faithful to keep doing the jobs his master assigns to him. Just as the master will reward his servant. Guys, listen, this is cool. God will reward us if we are faithful and do good while waiting for his return. Those followers who decide to stop doing good and turn from God are going to face punishment. And that might sound really bad and really scary, but it's not. God loves us. Can I tell you a story? This is about a couple of boys and a mom. Have any of you ever had a dirty room or had chores to do? I want you to listen to this story with me. Justin and Corey's mother told them to wash the breakfast dishes and clean their rooms while she planted flowers in the garden. She wanted them to be finished when she returned so they could go to the zoo. Doesn't that sound fun? Corey started to stack the dishes and then heard his favorite cartoon on TV. And after looking at it several times, when it sounded so interesting, he finally decided he would do his work after the cartoon. Justin had a new library book, and he was very eager to start reading it. Mom was outside. The work could wait a little while. When Corey's cartoon was over, Justin was just getting to an exciting part in his book, and he didn't want to stop. Mom's going to be coming inside soon, Corey said. I don't want to get in trouble. Come on, Justin. We'd better get busy with these dishes. 
Later, Justin turned the page in his book. Corey went to his room. It was a disaster. It's going to take me days to clean this, he thought. Where do I start? He picked up dirty clothes and he put them in the hamper and then he started on the toys and he picked up a comic book. And he opened it and he looked at the first page. He was tired of cleaning, so he sat on the floor totally involved in his comic book. Justin was just finishing chapter two when he heard his mother putting her garden tools away in the garage. He jumped up and he ran to look for Corey and they both rushed to the kitchen. Justin was just starting to run the water in the sink when their mother came into the house. What do you think will happen when their mother finds out that Justin and Corey haven't been doing what she asked them to do? I want you guys to think about that because that's what's going to happen about Jesus. Jesus will return when we least expect it. It says that in his Bible. It says that in his word. We don't know when it's going to happen. And just like Corey and Justin, if we're not doing the work that the Lord asks us to do. I'm going to read Mark 13 for you, verses 32 and 33. But about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. Guys, we need to be found doing what Jesus has told us to do when he returns. Otherwise, Jesus may come and catch us sleeping on the job or not doing what he's asked us to do. If we're faithful to keep doing God's work, we will be rewarded. The Bible tells us that when Jesus returns, he will bring his reward with him. We will be rewarded according to the work we've done for him. The punishment for those who get tired of working and quit may be the disappointment of receiving very little while watching others receive great rewards. Our Bible lesson has reminded us of something very important, to watch for Jesus, to watch for his return. How do we watch for Jesus' return? If we keep doing the work, he has given us to do because we love him. We are watching for him. We are being alert. We're paying attention to the things that, the, that God has asked us to do. And in doing that, it causes us to watch for Jesus. When we serve him every single day. Let me ask if this describes you. Are you tired of going to church? Do you get tired of it? Do you get tired of reading your Bible or praying to God every day? Maybe sometimes you just want to quit it all. It just when it's not fun. I don't want to do it. Living for God takes effort like anything else. Athletes don't become sports stars by sitting on the couch and watching TV. They work hard to improve their game. Their efforts are rewarded by being obedient and by learning. By us being obedient and learning about God and loving him and being true to him, reading his word, this is our assigned task. If we feel tired of our task and ask Jesus to help us stay alert, he will do that. He will help us to do that. Maybe you've never asked Jesus in your heart, so staying alert and thinking about Jesus coming back is something you've never even thought of. Maybe you're not watching for his return at all. You probably hope he won't return, because if he does, you will be left behind. But you can change that today by asking Jesus to come into your life and to forgive your sins. And guys, it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're little or big, adult, young or old. Jesus wants us to accept him as his Savior so that we can be in heaven with him. And then he asks us to do the work and not to become weary in doing it. 
So this is your chance today to make sure that you're on the alert when Jesus returns. Will you guys say this prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and that you rose from the dead. I turn from those sins, Lord, and I invite you to come into my heart, Lord. I want to be watching for you, Jesus. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior all of the days of my life, Lord, so that I can be with you in heaven someday. I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Guys, maybe you're sorry that you have either quit watching for him or haven't wanted to watch for him. Or maybe you've wanted to quit being a Christian altogether. If you want to make changes in your life and you're not sure how and when, as I say this last prayer, will you just trust the Lord? Would you just say to him today that you're sorry, that you want to be watching for him and ask for his help? Just have a conversation with him today, guys. He loves you. And he wants to see you accomplish the will of the Father. He wants to make that way for you. But he can't do it if you're not even talking to him. Or if you don't even feel like being a Christian anymore. So will you pray with me today as we do this? Just where you're at. Just get alone with Jesus. And just tell him that you're sorry. And that you want him to lead your life. Lord, I just pray today for everyone who's listening, Lord. I thank you for those who made a choice to become Christians today, Lord. But Lord, I pray for those right now that maybe have been. And they've made that choice before, but Lord, it feels like it would be easier to not be a Christian. And so today, Lord, I pray as they ask for help, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would meet them in that place, Lord. That they would just feel the love of Jesus right now as they trust you, Lord, for their future. Lord, help them to learn what you've asked them to do by witnessing to their friends. Lord, help us, Lord, me included. Time is so short, God, and it's so important that we tell people about you. Help us, Lord, I pray, to reap a harvest. In your mighty name, Jesus, we say, amen. Thanks for joining me today, guys.